Welcome guys to Game of the Year 2020. What a year it's been, eh? 2020, it's the year of lies and deception, guys. And that's just on my channel. No, seriously guys, 2020's been a tragic year in more ways than one. Uh, but let's just talk about the gaming years. Um, this has been the year of average games. I mean, I'm looking at the list of the Games of the Year nominations here, and a lot of them are just average games. And Game of the Year should not be about average games. It should be about outstanding games, the best of the best. And the bar was so low in 2020 that the best of the best is just average games. There's a few exceptions. There's a few exceptions that are really good games on this list, as you'll find out in a minute. But a lot of them, nah. A poor, poor year, guys. A very poor year. Um, I've changed the category slightly. We have a new category called Early Access. Now, what I'm doing now on, from now on, every year, if your game is in Early Access, you can only be entered into the Early Access uh, Awards. So you can't go into the Best RPG, uh, Best Strategy, Best Shooter, if your game is in Early Access. And there's a good reason for that. Uh, some games in Early Access are good, and then they just get spoiled by too much fiddling with. And uh, by the time they release, they're just not as good. So that's why I'm waiting now until the developers reach uh, patch one and say game is now finished and released. That's when it'll get judged in the game of the year. So that's going to scramble some of these categories a bit this year and leave a few of them a little bit empty. Let's start with one of those empty categories, guys. Best role playing game of the year. Now, there's three in this in this uh, nomination and one of them isn't even an RPG. I just put it in as a troll. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Yes, it won Best RPG on PC Gamer. And it isn't, in my eyes, it's not even a freaking RPG, so I'm kicking that out. <coughs> Cyberpunk 277. Well, guys, Cyberpunk was billed as an RPG, but apparently, just before release, it's not an RPG anymore. They took RPG off and stuck in, what, Action Adventure or something? I can't remember what it was. And... I have to say, guys, when I played that, it felt like an RPG. Um, it had lots of RPG-ness in it, but it was a very watered-down RPG. There was hardly any consequences for your actions, so it fails as an RPG com completely. You know, you can the police are a joke. You know that you can just steal anything you want from under people's noses and they don't give a shit. It's not a good RPG, and it's buggy as fuck. Which leaves the winner of Best RPG... Wasteland 3. Now, it looks like it's just won by default, which I kind of guess it has, but let's not take that away from the game. It's a fantastic game. It's a really good RPG, Wasteland 3. A worthy winner of this category in 2020. It just was head and tails above the competition in my eyes. I really did enjoy it. You could change all your stats, build the character that you want, rename them all as well, and the game just oozed atmosphere. So well done, Wasteland 3. Next, we have Best VR Game. Now, I didn't play a lot of VR, but there's two outstandingly good VR games of this year. And they are Half-Life Alex, which was phenomenally good, guys. And a game that I only played today in VR for the first time, and I've been playing it all morning, and that is Microsoft Flight. It's just had the VR patch uh, given to it over the last few days, and so I donned my awful, soon to be thrown away VR headset, CV1, from Mark Zucka 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 f you, Berg. I am getting a Facebook account so you can go f yourself. And I really did enjoy it. It's amazing, guys. Microsoft Flight in VR is absolutely phenomenal. It's really, really good. But I'm giving it to Half Life Alex because Half Life Alex was just in a different realm to anything I've played before in VR. It was just, it was just insanely good game. Everything about it was good. I mean, it was clunky. Yes, most VR games are clunky, but the gunplay was outstanding. The atmosphere was just so amazing. And if you have not watched my playthroughs on Worth a Buy of the Jeff level, you're missing a treat because it's the most scared I've been in my life in a video game. Absolutely amazing game. Hold on. Can I get it from round here? I can. Uh. <gasps> What's your f***ing 
f***ing kidding me? You are actually f***ing kidding me. So well done, Half-Life Alex. Next category is strategy. Now this isn't tactics, this is strategy, deep strategy games. Only one game fits that bill for 2020, and it is Crusader Kings 3. So that wins by default. But to be honest with you, I think it would have won anyway, despite what it, what else was in there. I've looked at what was in there for last year, and it would have won against last year's as well. So a fantastic game, so deep, guys, but brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So Crusader Kings 3 wins best strategy game. Now, the next category has a big turnout because 2020 had a lot of these games, and I'm talking about these turn-based stealth um, or real-time kind of tactical games. We're talking XCOM kind of games here. Now, we had a lot of great ones, and I love that genre of games. They are fun to play, and we had a lot of them, and they were all good. So, well, not all were good, but most of them were good. We had Corruption 2029. great game. We had Broken Lines, guys. Remember Broken Lines, the World War II alternate kind of World War II game? That was great as well. Gears Tactics, which I thought was going to be shite, but it was great. Thoroughly enjoyed Gears Tactics. Desperados 3, guys. What a game that was. So much immersion and atmosphere in that game. Really well done game. Really well done. And Wasteland 3, we've already mentioned it. Now that fits into this category as well because the combat is very similar to the other games in this category. Some of them are turn-based, some of them are, are real-time. And guys, it was such a hard decision to make because all of them are good games. This is where 2020 excelled, in my opinion. But there was one that was just better than the others. Obviously, Mac. And that was Desperados 3. I'm giving it to Desperados 3. It was just... One of the shining gems of 2020. Next category, guys, will interest a lot of you. It's best shooter. Not first person shooter, but best shooter. Because shooters were thin on the ground as well. Now, this category is a bit controversial. It has Doom Eternal in. Now, Doom Eternal uh, had some great gunplay, fantastic gunplay. But it had parkour in, which I thought was shite. It doesn't belong in Doom. Bring back Doom, Doom, Doom. That's what I say. We also have Half-Life Alex in this category because, guys, Half-Life Alex was fantastic at shooting. The shooting in Half-Life Alex was just phenomenally good. It was just out of this world. Out of this world. Uh, really good. But we're bringing in, here's the controversy, guys. We're bringing in Deep Rock Galactic. Now, this was up for an award last year, but it was early access last year. It's only come out this year. So according to my new rules, it's allowed to be in here now. So that's up for best shooter. We've also got Risk of Rain 2, which was also up for an award last year. It came runner-up, I think, uh, Risk of Rain 2. I can't remember. Might have even won something last year. But that just finished this year and came out this year. So that's in best shooter. Nothing else really deserves to be in there that I've reviewed on my channel. So it's up between them four. Doom, Half-Life Alex, Risk of Rain, or Deep Rock Galactic. What did I have the most fun playing and shooting with? What game had the best shooting for me? Half-Life Alex. again. It was just better. When I was shooting things in Half-Life Alex, it was just better than Doom, Deep Rock Galactic, Risk of Rain 2. I'd be lying if I said Deep Rock Galactic is better as a shooter. It's just not. Half-Life Alex is just outstanding. Oh, I'm gonna get some heat from the cops for this. Anyway, best remastered game, guys. There's been a lot of remastered games uh, this year. We've had Command and Conquer remastered. We had Mafia remastered. We've had Need for... What's Need for Speed? Get that out. We had Destroy All Humans. That was a great game. I loved Destroy All Humans. Had so much fun in that. But for me, this one game was just exactly as it should have been as a remastered game. They didn't f*** with stuff. They left the gameplay the same and just made the game better. You see, that's why Mafia isn't winning this, because they twiddled with it and they f***ing consoleized it all with your stupid grenade f***ing thrown and, and the way they did other things. They didn't put the trams in and stuff. Yeah, they're putting it in later, but that's too late. It's too f***ing late. 
No, I'm sorry. I've already eaten my cake. Don't bring the fucking squirty cream out now. It's too late. I've eaten it. Best remastered game, Command and Conquer, guys. Absolutely brilliant. Worthy of a win. Worthy of a win. Now, guys, early access. Best early access game of the year. My goodness, this is a list of great games. <laughs> this is a list of greatness, guys. Some of these would have cleaned up in other categories this year. But they're not finished, so they can't. We have Grounded. My goodness, what a great game. Great game, Grounded, where you shrunk in the garden. It's just outstanding. How absolutely outstandingly good. Mountain Blade 2. Everything I wanted from Mountain Blade, but it's not finished yet. Absolutely phenomenally good game. I love that game. But I'm trying not to play it until it's finished because I want to finish and experience the, the finished version of it, not the half-baked version that's in early access. Phasmophobia. It's a VR game, but it's also playable without VR. But playing VR is on a completely different level. It is one of the scariest VR games I've ever played. Really, really good fun. Magpie. 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 Uh, guys, uh, Magpie is unresponsive at the moment. I think he may be compromised. I see his vitals are up. Uh, Magpie is doing some kind of... <laughs> Medieval Dynasty. What potential that has. Brilliant. Brilliant. Fall Guys. I love Fall Guys. What a hoot that is to play, especially when you're streaming. Really good, fun game. Gunfire Reborn, a four-player co-op, first-person roguelike shooter. Absolutely love that game. Needs more love, but it's great. Scrap Mechanic Survival. What a fun co-op game that is as well. Absolutely, guys. A list of potentially huge games for next year then. They're going to cause a headache next year for, for the categories that they're going to go and do. But guys, I'm going to give it to Mountain Blade 2 because Mountain Blade 2 give me the most pleasure out of all of them games in early access this year so far. Now, finally, guys, it's the game of the year. Now, that's between all the winners of each category plus Ghosts of Shishima. Oh, yeah. That's when the big guns come in. What a game that was. Let down a little bit by some iffy AI when you weren't, that aren't in combat running around like idiots. We've also got the amazing Hades. Oh, Hades, guys. That was a great game as well. That goes up against Half-Life Alex, Crusader Kings 3, Wastelands 3, Wasteland 3 rather, and Desperados 3. Oh, guys, this is tough. This is tough. This is tough. Hades, Half-Life, or Desperados 3. God, you're not going to give it to Half-Life, are you? That would be three awards it's bloody picked up. Hades. Oh, but Desperados 3 was awesome. Runner-up. I'm giving runner-up to Desperados 3. I'm giving runner-up to Desperados 3. Second best game of the year for me, Desperados 3. Absolutely brilliant game. And I'm giving the winner of Game of the Year 2020 to Half-Life Alex. The reason Half-Life Alex wins this award is because after playing that game, I just realized how bad so many other games were. In fact, guys, I can now play any horror game you like on my flat monitor and not give a shit. It set the bar so high. Even when I'm playing a shooter now, I kind of think, damn it, I wish this was done like Half-Life Alex." It's just set the bar so high. It's a worthy, worthy winner in my eyes. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next year.